You are watching the first episode of my Godo 1-bit Metroidvania series. Within the next 10 minutes I'll show you how to implement 2D sprite animations, simple player controller stuff and the basic usage of time maps. Sounds good? Let's get started! The hero in our Metroidvania will be a tiny astronaut. And in order to move our character around in the scene, a good point to start with is adding a kinematic body 2D as a root node. You will notice a yellow exclamation mark next to your kinematic body 2D. But no need to hurry, we will add the missing collision shape as soon as we get an impression of the size of our character. Therefore we first need to see him. So let's drag in a sprite sheet containing all the animation frames for our character right into the scene. And now we can continue and adapt some of the animation settings of our sprite sheet which are more specifically the V and H frame property. I'm counting one line which is one V frame and one, two, three, fourteen H frames for this sprite sheet. Then we go on and reset the sprite sheet's transform and push our sprite above the X coordinate of our scene. If you got the impression that your player's character doesn't look like a sharp and crisp guy, make sure to set the import settings of your sprite sheet to 2D pixel. Then click on the re-import button and for pixel art games you're working on you can set this as a default for your texture present. It's nearly always a good idea to have a 2D camera follow along with your player. So let's add this note 2 to our scene. And to let Godot know that this is our preferred cam we have to check make current in its options. And now it's time to add the first two little animations to our player. The note of choice for this is the animation player note. So let's add it to the scene. In the lower half of the editor are the player animation notes options and that's where we add a new idle animation to our animation note. Our idle animation will have four keyframes in total. I set the snap settings between keyframes to 0.2 with a total duration of the animation of 0.8 seconds. And I also activate the flag autoplay on load for this animation and the animation looping. In Godot the g -g generation of keyframes is facilitated by a little plus key symbol on each of the sprite sheet properties. So if I click on this key symbol next to the frame property of my sprite sheet, my animation player automatically creates a track for a frame property with a keyframe at time zero. Now I can continuously click on this key symbol to generate the remaining three keyframes of my idle animation. Now we can hit play on the animation player node to see our looping idle animation in action. To generate our run cycle we will follow the same basic steps like we did for the idle animation. The quicker movement of the run cycle animation means a shorter total duration of 0.4 for this clip and only 0.1 for the snap grid settings between keyframes. We do not want to activate autoplay on load for this animation because it's reserved for the idle animation but animation looping will be activated because it's not called run cycle for no reason. And again I'm using the key symbol next to the sprite sheet's frame property to generate my four keyframes for the run animation. And with the basics animation done for our player character we can add our missing collision shape 2D to the scene. I'll choose a rectangle shape for that one and I make it just a tiny bit smaller than our player's sprite size. The collision shape of our character will be especially important for its interaction with the environment, mainly 
boring walls and stuff, I guess. Last but not least, we rename the root node, which is still called Kinematic Body 2D, to Player, and save our scene. With all the basic visual stuff done for the player character, it's time to give our little astronaut a brain. Let's go scripting! Let's start by attaching a script to our player node. Let's keep this script as simple as possible by just adding two variables. A vector 2 for velocity and a variable run speed. Run speed is 5 times 16 pixels, which means that our astronaut will move 5 tiny tiles per second. At the beginning of our physics process function, we set our velocity x value to 0 and check for input. This is done in the getInput function, which is called every physics frame. In our project settings input map, the left and right key are already mapped to labels. Let's keep these labels to store the input is action pressed event in new variables called left and right. Then our run speed variable is either subtracted or added to our velocity vector depending on in which direction we are moving. Next we need a reference to our animation player and our sprite sheet. This is done at the top of the script using the onready var expression. Depending on its direction, the astronaut's sprite sheet is either flipped or not flipped in horizontal direction. And if the astronaut is moving, our animation player will play the run animation and else the idle animation. I quickly make some minor corrections for my animation player's variable name and then return to the physics process function to implement a move and slide function for the kinematic body 2D. The move and slide function moves our body along our velocity vector and for this purpose it will need a third variable, an up vector, so we know later on where floors and walls are. Let's give our little astronaut something to stand on so he does not fall into open space. We quickly create a new scene, add a root node and name it main. We instance our player scene and add a new tile map as a child node to the root node. Then we continue by creating a new tile set for our tile map. We switch to the tile editor, expand it if necessary and drag in an available tile set texture. The yellow plus sign lets us quickly create a new single tile in the tile set editor. Make sure that the snap options of the tile set are set to the respective asset size in pixels. We change to collision mode and create a new rectangle collision shape for our tile. Last but not least, we finish by saving our tile set and it's ready for usage. The cell size of the tile map needs to be adapted to our tile size. For this game it's 16 times 16 pixels. And now we can go on and draw a line using our tile to generate some reliable ground for our astronaut to stand on. If we now hit play, declare the current scene as our main scene, our already little astronaut seems to be microscopic small. So let's change that. I do it by going to the display window in the project settings. I reduce the standard width and height of the window to 512 and 300 pixels. Then I go on and set the stretch mode to viewport and the aspect ratio to keep. Don't ask me why I do that.
It just works. And if we now hit play again, our pixel art is far more eye friendly. Our little astronaut moves left and right and our animations are played as they are supposed to. Which brings us to the end of this tutorials episode. I hope you enjoyed learning the player controller basics with me and follow me along the creational process for this tiny Metroidvania. See you soon!